We are following breaking news right now. Attorney Michael Avenatti says that he is representing a client now leveling serious accusations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Sarah Cena and Sarah Seidner is joining me right now with more details. Sarah, what are these new accusations? Uh, so they're, they're pretty strong accusations from a woman named Julie Swetnick, um, who says that she first met uh, Kavanaugh and uh, his friend Mark Judge uh, at a party uh, between 1980 and 81 in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, she says that she herself observed Brett Kavanaugh um, doing things that she uh, said were absolutely unacceptable. She says him and Mark Judge were joined at the hip, if you will, and that she consistently saw them together in many social settings. She says there is, you know, no question in her mind um, that Mark Judge knows a lot of information. But here are some of the allegations she is making uh, about Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, she says that they were at a party uh, together, that, that she attended well over 10 house parties in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, she says that she witnessed both Brett Kavanaugh and Mark Judge drink excessively and engage in highly inappropriate conduct. And I'm reading from the declaration that she has sent to the Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee has told Cena that they have received uh, this declaration from her, a sworn declaration uh, taken uh, and sent by her attorney, Michael Avenatti. She says that she observed highly inappropriate conduct, uh, including uh, Kavanaugh and Judge being overly aggressive with girls and not taking no for an answer. She says she also observed Brett Kavanaugh drink excessively at many of these parties and engage in what she says, quote, is abusive and physically aggressive behavior towards girls, including pressing girls against him without their consent, grinding against girls, and attempting to remove or shift girls' clothing so that their body parts, their private parts, uh, were exposed. Uh, she also says she often witnessed Brett Kavanaugh uh, speak in a very demeaning manner towards girls in general, as well as uh, specific girls by name. Um, and she says that she saw him behave as a, quote, mean drunk. Now, she makes some other allegations uh, that that are, she doesn't say that she herself directly witnessed. Uh, they are even more e extreme allegations. But the things that she says that she has witnessed are, are pretty clear here, uh, talking about him grinding against girls and doing things to girls uh, that she says were absolutely inappropriate and that the girls uh, did not give their consent for. Uh, she is obviously uh, one of now three women who have come forward. This is the first time, though, one of the women has signed a declaration uh, and and sent that to the Judiciary Committee, uh, signed this declaration. It's basically a, a sworn statement um, that she could, you know, pay a price for if there is incorrect information in here or they can prove that she's lying. She has also said that Brett Kavanaugh is a liar when she talks about how he acted uh, in college. And as you know, he spoke on Fox News uh, about how he acted in college and, and denied uh, many of these allegations, although he has not responded yet. We are reaching out to him about these particular allegations. They just came out uh, within the past 25, 30 minutes. Uh, we want to make that very clear uh, that she has just filed this. The Judiciary Committee has just gotten a hold of this. Uh, her attorney, Michael Avenatti, has been uh, very uh, plainly stating that he believes an FBI investigation uh, is in order, that they want that FBI investigation uh, to involve their client as well as the others who have come forward. He says that's what he thinks is the most appropriate thing uh, to happen going forward. Okay, Sarah, great. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate you bringing the breaking news. Um, there is much more to come on this, and we're working through this uh, affidavit as we go through it. Let me go right now, though, to CNN senior congressional correspondent Manu Raju um, for more on this. Manu, um, what are you hearing? The, the, the Judiciary Committee already has, already is reviewing this? Yes, they received this complaint, uh, this email and the sworn affidavit uh, soon after, uh, around the same time as uh, Avenatti put out this tweet and Republican uh, aides to Senator Chuck Grassley, who's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, issued a statement saying that they were reviewing the allegations and that's essentially the extent of their comment. We have not heard Democrats weigh in specifically 
on this yet, but typically what the way that these the committee has approached allegations, not just from Christine Blasey Ford, but also from Debbie Ramirez, the woman who made the allegation, the New Yorker article, that Kavanaugh exposed himself to her while they were in college. They have tried to have a private staff level conversation, either with the attorneys and as well as with uh, the accuser uh, to hear their side of the story. They've gone back to Brett Kavanaugh, who has now talked twice privately to staff investigators and denied those two other allegations. We'll see if they probably will follow the same protocol going forward, and we're not getting any sense that the Republicans are going to change their plans to move forward okay. with Thursday's hearing at this point. So that's the, the we'll hear the reaction more formally from Republicans and yeah. Democrats in the coming hours, but the moment people digesting this information about it and the question is what kind of impact does it have on the votes ultimately to confirm Brett Kavanaugh, Kate? Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right, Mano. I think this needs to this is still settling in as it's just coming out before we see what the real impact could be on votes and even in the most immediate the hearing tomorrow. We'll stick with you and you can let me know if that if that changes while we're here. Um, let me get over to CNN political director David Chalian on this. Um, David, uh, Michael Avenatti's not just not, not just any attorney off the street. Um, what, what's your react? What's your react? You know, obviously there, there's a history here. Um, what's your reaction to this? Well, I think we got to put this in context of where we are in the Kavanaugh confirmation process, which was not a good place for the White House and Republicans. This is a, a Supreme Court nomination that has been hanging in the balance before these latest allegations from Michael Avenatti's client. I think this added to this, Kate, is going to put Republicans in an extraordinarily difficult place. Uh, you had seen that they had already uh, advertised that they wanted to, uh, right after Thursday's uh, hearing with Dr. Blasey and uh, Judge Kavanaugh, to move to a committee vote on Friday. There was talk of perhaps getting on the floor uh, this weekend. And Mitch McConnell, you heard him uh, yes. last week before social conservatives saying, we're going to put our head down and just sort of barrel through this. I don't think there's any barreling through this right now. And I think if you listen carefully to what President Trump has been saying all week about this, he's been expressing real regret. And he's been talking about that Kavanaugh has a chance to be a nominee. This is not a president who is speaking uh, adamantly that without a doubt in his mind, Kavanaugh is going to be a Supreme Court justice. So I do think this was a nomination already hanging in the balance, and it just got incredibly more difficult for the White House and the Republicans to get Judge Kavanaugh on the bench. Um, David, stick with me, but just full transparency to all of our viewers as we're working through this. As Sarah Seidner was bringing us the breaking news of the allegations um, that are put forth in this declaration by Julie Swetnick, we're still vetting portions of this declaration. Um, so as we are working through that, we're, we're, we're only discussing portions of this declaration. We will bring more to you if we can and when we will. Um, joining me in this conversation additionally is also Paul Callen. Paul, just on the very basic fact that this is a, this is a declaration that um, under penalty of law, I mean, if, 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 if this is seen as if she's lying and making this up, I mean, would please, please explain. This actually would not constitute a legal declaration under oath that would lead, say, to a perjury charge if it was false. Okay. She ha really has to be sworn as a witness before uh, the Judiciary Committee okay. uh, for their, uh, you know, uh, penalties to apply. However, uh, this is a, a document that's uh, obviously, uh, you know, really shocking in, in what's alleged. So. There, are, there are really explosive accusations in this, but what we're talking about right now, David, um, in terms of uh, she attended many parties um, in, in those summers and saw Mark Judge and Brett Kavanaugh present together and on numerous occasions at these parties, parties seeing them drink excessively and engage in highly inappropriate conduct. Um, this, uh, at the least, speaks to something that has come up in the last, well, since Brett Kavanaugh did his interview with Fox. Precisely. Right? Because yep. that, after that, it was kind of, is he more choir boy or is he more frat boy? And where and what does there's that a huge matter? gulf? Yeah, yeah. and there's what a does huge that matter in terms of the accusation that he's facing in this hearing, right? Well, so let's not even say what it matters in terms of the accusations, but it, what it is, what does it matter as the senators assess his character here? Because that, at the end of the day, is what we're talking about. Uh, Lisa Murkowski said this. Uh, it, we're now right. talking about um, a, a, a Senate, uh, a Supreme Court nominee's character. That's what this is about. And there is a huge gulf 
between how Kavanaugh portrayed himself in that Fox News interview and what his youthful experiences were and how uh, he conducted himself, and now what we're seeing uh, in an additional uh, allegations. Again, uh, we have no idea uh, the truthfulness behind them, but we we are now hearing a similar pattern in these allegations of behavior and youthful uh, experiences that don't necessarily match with how Kavanaugh was portraying himself. And, and on that issue, uh, Brett, uh, um, Paul, Brett Kavanaugh's attorney was on this morning speaking to John Berman and said when it comes to all of this, yeah, he drank, she said, and, and yeah, he acknowledges it, but that's not the issue here. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I think his drinking is uh, not the issue here, but I also think that Kavanaugh went very lightly on that. I think he would have been smarter if he said, yes, I drank a lot, probably when I was in high school, like anybody else, uh, but uh, I didn't do these things. And, uh, you know, I think he put himself in a difficult position by portraying himself as a real choir boy in his interview. 